Hey everyone, it's your boy Graphic back with another video and today we're going to be looking at the top 5 solo randomized dungeons tips. Uh, we start out with number 1 and it's going to be all about the food. What kind of food should I be using? Uh, this is a 100% going to be cabbage soup. Cabbage soup is going to let you regen HP between mobs and save you an insane amount of time waiting for HP to regen. I just recently realized how good cabbage soup really was. It is so good for random dungeons, and thanks to a previous comment in a video by One Time A Craft, uh, thanks for that suggestion of cabbage soup. I should have known and realized how good it was. I tried it out, and yes, you were right. It is amazing. So I do suggest bringing a pork omelet or a beef stew as a secondary food in, the, you know, in your inventory in case you see a PvP fight coming. You can you know switch out the food real quick and pop the beef stew or pork omelet depending on what your character really needs for that pvp fight but i definitely suggest using that cabbage soup for the hp regen it's going to help you guys out a lot and speed up your progress and dungeon runs and dungeon speed times. so definitely suggest that and now we're going to be looking at tip number two bring a siphoned energy Make sure you bring a siphoned energy because one thing I get very, very annoyed is looking at those players that are running about 7-1 gear or 6-1 gear and they're running into these dungeons and they're just, you know, they're not bringing their siphoned energy because they're using such high gear so they don't want to waste their money with that, you know, siphoned energy and that chance of breaking your gear. But you should definitely bring it with you because if you get into a situation where you need to use that siphoned energy that only costs 8k, uh, you know, if you're going to get in a situation where you need to fight, you are definitely would rather fight and lose one item over fighting and losing all the items. So definitely take that chance at the siphoned energy for 8k and take that chance at the 15% breaking, uh, the breaking chance of 15%. Um, it busts your item power by about 100 and it's just going to make you a lot, you know, safer in them PvP fights if you guys get in some. Um, it's never a problem to just bring it along with you and you can decide later on if you're going to use it or not. Uh, but tip number three, we're going to have enter locations. Solo dungeons are located all over the place in these zones. Make sure to select a solo dungeon that works best for you. Make sure you don't pick a dungeon right outside of a city in a red or black zone. And definitely don't pick a dungeon next to a road. I highly suggest picking a dungeon off the beaten path. Also, to make sure your trips are even more successful, pick a dungeon close to a war camp or a territory your alliance owns. This will give you a fast access to bank items if you get a good drop from dungeons without having to go all the way back to town. I also suggest staying away from dungeons right outside enemy territories as the enemy will most likely be using these dungeons to their benefit. Tip number four, change location. If seen, change your location. The same rule applies if you're gathering in a black zone if you're gathering and an enemy sees you, you're going to change your spot. You're going to move to a different location. If an enemy sees that you have a, you know, if they're able to inspect you and see that you're running a PvE build, noticing that you're a solo and not with a group, they may turn back and start checking solo random dungeons for players knowing that you are in an area somewhere. Take the precaution, do what you do when you're gathering and leave the zone and play smart. Playing smart is sometimes more efficient than playing dumb and trying to speed past everything. Changing locations is sometimes the smarter and more efficient way than dying and regearing. Tip number five, what zone? Solo random dungeons are available in blue, yellow, red, and black zones. I've had a lot of questions about this and I wanted to make sure you guys understood. Make sure you understand what is possible in that zone and before you get into that solo dungeon make sure you understand the zones qualities in the blue zones you'll be killing lower tier mobs however you have no way of dying to enemy players this will amount to just okay silver and okay loot as you will have no risk yellow zones you will be able to die to other players however you will just lose a few stackables damage your armor some and lose a little bit of silver, but nothing more. You will receive better rewards, better fame, and loot than you would in blue zones. However, the yellow zone has harder mobs than blue zones and tends to be a higher tier. Red zones contain full loot PvP. However, the enemy player has to make themselves hostile before attacking you as an innocent player in the red zone. The red zone has better loot than the previous blue and yellow zones mentioned, 
but the red zone is in higher tier zones, making the mobs a bit harder. Making you get far better loot and fame, but also increasing the difficulty of the dungeon. Lastly, we have the most dangerous dungeon in the game, the black zone. The black zone dungeons are the most dangerous because it is full loot PvP. You have no way of knowing if somebody entered your dungeon. Uh, you know, you don't get that hostile player tick at the bottom right of your screen. You know, you have no idea when somebody comes in the black zone and enters your dungeon. But because of this, the game rewards you with better loot, better silver, and a little bit of higher tier mobs than you would see in the red zone. So it's definitely worth your time going into the black zone. I've done a little bit of black zone and red zone solo dungeons, and by far black outweighs, uh, you know, the, the chance of death because the black zone really, really does give you by far the best silver and fame that you can, you know, get doing solo dungeons. So make sure you guys take the time to play smart and play efficiently. I hope you guys liked my top five tips for solo randomized dungeons and I'll see you guys next time.